Episode 91 of Screen Wings is brought to you by the undying rage of God. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Oh. I should have known what I was getting in for it. Because when I clicked no on the poll, it was like 76% yes. So Thomas, I should have known the comments. Thomas got in a fight on YouTube with a YouTube bunch of people comments. who don't like gay people. Yeah, they were saying that they can respectfully disagree. You I, can't. That doesn't make any sense either. Yeah, they're like, we like gay people. We love the sin, not the sinner. And it's just like, I, that doesn't mean anything. I even got into like breaking it down. Like, like, look, you yourself may not be foaming at the mouth with hatred for gay people, but you have the idea that like what a natural love is for them is wrong. So the way that they feel about like, how a man loves a woman or a woman loves a man, vice versa. It's the same. It's just that they have this stigma attached to it that has a negative effect on them. And then they're just like, yeah, but I don't hate gay people. I'm like, that's not the fuck fucking point. I'm saying that you disapproving of them being gay. is contributing is to the hate. Yeah, it's a hateful idea. And just because you're... Not using the word hate to describe it doesn't mean jack shit. God damn. Some people. It's like me versus 50 of them. Not really. It was probably more like 10. Should have should have told them where I live. We could have taken them together. Uh, no, I've had people like, hey, I'm coming to Washington. and I get into lots of you. Uh, not YouTube specifically, but lots of comment arguments. It's kind of what I live for. <laughs> I used to do that a lot with Facebook. But then I just started being like, I'm just going to unfriend the people I did in a oh, I, do, I do it with face. randos. I yeah, just, no, now I do as well. Yeah, I just like, I like pissing people off. I, I saw a promoted tweet from uh, the new Saw movie, mm. and somebody in the description was like, hey, I'm excited for the movie, but I don't like how, like, how much you're sensationalizing, like, hey, we're going to be in the big screen, it's going to be a big event, mm. because, like, COVID's still going to be a thing in a few months. And then somebody's like, yeah, but if it's good, it'll be worth it. I'm like, what? <laughs> well, he's got a point. If it's good. <laughs> if it's good, it's okay if people yeah, die. Of course. Um, so anyway, yeah, today we'll be talking about two tank movies, which are obviously related to this discussion. We'll be talking about Beast of War, or just in The Beast, mm-hmm. and Fury by Suicide Squad Man. It is, isn't it? Yeah. I told you that last week. I... He also made, like, End of Watch. I mean, to be fair, Suicide Squad, I mean, it seems like it could have been a tangible movie at one point, but then... You should watch the director's cut. I mean, I haven't seen the director's cut. I saw the theatrical version, so that's why... And it was incredible. It was not a film. It was. It felt like I was watching, like, air. I don't know how to describe air. it. Air. It was vapid. It was nothing. Um, but yeah, before we get into any of those movies, let's talk about what we did this week. First thing, big news, big news, everyone. I am caught up with One Piece. Oh, I 10, 10? 10, 10. I, uh, I was at 940 still last night. Mm-hmm. I spent, uh, from one to four, I read One Piece and then I went to bed and I woke up at eight and then read One Piece until I finished it. So I'm pretty tired, <laughs> but I, I'm caught up with One Piece. Yeah, and man, it's pretty good. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, there are times that I kind of just wish it was a book, so that I could not see Oda's drawings of women. But <laughs> that's Fair. my main issue with Oda. <laughs> and it does get worse. I was like, as I was reading, I'm like, you know, sexualization isn't too bad. I'm just like. And it just that it goes. It's not like the worst in yeah. like a manga, but it it's, it's still disappointing because I think it was doing pretty well for itself. Yeah, it's like there there are some areas where like Oda feels like he's taken like steps forward, and there's a couple areas where it feels like he just sometimes slips and takes a step back. And I was like, ah, but eighty, no, nah, like ninety percent of the story is still fucking like. One Piece greatness. Yeah. 1010 was fucking awesome. 1010 was, was fucking an awesome. awesome chapter. Oh, man. Like, 
it, that is a good chapter for me to like end on until like as I I know that's why I was like, like hey this is a good point I was like hey we're on break you know it was a pretty good chapter like ten oh nine I would have been like oh, whatever yeah cool oh I gotta wait for the next one but ten ten I'm like that was sick mm-hmm. and <coughs> this whole time ah uh, I probably shouldn't get we probably shouldn't get into it for those who don't know unless we caveat or like give us spoilers. No, I mean you can just talk yeah, about it. We'll later. talk about it now. Okay. Um, um, I also just finished watching uh, the Fatal Fury mm. uh, animated movie. Fatal Fury is a, a fighting game by SNK. Uh, the movie sucked. Um, <laughs> it was it was lame. A um, movie based on a fighting game that wasn't good. Yeah, I know. I refuse to believe it. I know. I know. <laughs> uh, let's see what else I watched. Anything? I started reading B Stars. I hate B Stars. Yeah, I started reading um, B Stars too. I'm not. I don't hate it, but I don't particularly like it at this point. Uh, I I am just pure. No opinion on it. That's like all I did. I just read One Piece. Played a couple board games. Uh, but it was like mostly just reading One Piece, and. Stars. Yeah, that's like it. That's all I did this week. Mm. Um, yeah, I didn't do much. Oh, we watched Sorry. Riverdale. The Archie show? Yeah. Oh, I've seen the first season. It's really bad. And I've seen yeah. half of the second season. But it's like, uh, I decided that I'm like, this would be a fun show to watch with Joe and Pierre. Mm. So we started watching it. And it is. <laughs> Yeah, we I just mean, watched the first episode. It seems it seems like it'd be a mildly entertaining, uh, like bad watch. Uh, I don't know. I it's pretty fucking stupid. It's I just it's so jarring to me. Like I'm not gonna be one of those like gatekeepers that's like, no, it's not what Archie is because obviously I don't give it that big of a shit. But I, I like Archie comics and I'm open minded. But it really doesn't seem like anything I want from. Like an Archie story. <laughs> <coughs> yeah, that would make sense. It's like Archie X Pretty Little Liars, it seems like. Yeah, that's, yeah, pretty much. We should watch does, Pretty Little Liars for the podcast. Does Jughead eat lots of cheeseburgers on the show? Um, he doesn't appear until, like, the last minute of the first episode. And we just watched the first episode. Because he's like, he's like the narrator of the first episode. He's, like, writing a report or something, and he's, like, telling about, like, my friend Archie Andrews, I'm Cole Sprouse, I'm gonna play Sanji. Mm. I mean, I, I personally don't think he made a bad Sanji problem. I think he's pretty alright. I haven't, I don't know how quality of an actor he is, because I haven't seen him in anything recently. So. I mean, everyone in Riverdale's pretty fucking bad, but I feel like it, they also it's not just a fair don't judgment. care. Yeah, exactly. They're just like, it's a CW show. We can do whatever the fuck we want. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no. I'd prefer they get, like, a Swedish actor because I want them to, like, cast based on, like, the actual, like, regions that Oda said that each character corresponded mm-hmm. to. I think that'd be Cool, and they said that they're going for a multicultural cast with the live action, so... So that means you can play Frankie. And just gotta age you up. Yeah. Quick age. I'll just smoke a lot of cigarettes. Is anyone else from America? Uh, no. Frankie's the only one. Uh, Chopper's Canadian. I mean, we're in Washington. We're That's Canada. close. We're almost there. <laughs> no, not really. Hey, close enough. You're right. Uh... We're like Canadians without all the benefits. <laughs> anyway. Uh, yeah. Did you do anything else this week? I watched, I rewatched uh, the first two entries from the Heisei era for Godzilla. So Godzilla oh. 1984 and Godzilla versus Biolante. I've heard Biolante's okay. Yeah. How's 94? Uh, uh, 84. They're both, 84. They both got kind of slow starts, uh, but they're both all right. I'd probably recommend Biolante over uh, 84, mm. but 84 is interesting because like halfway through the movie, they basically kind of like insert a storyline that's basically fail safe in Doctor Strangelove's story. 
And oh. It, it's like, huh. And it's it's interesting because, like, Japan's in the middle of it. And it's like, oh, that's, that's kind of an interesting twist on this story that I've seen in two other movies now. Yeah. But, uh, they play it slightly differently. It's not like a carbon copy, but it's pretty... You watch it and you're like, yeah, this is... This is that. Um, but, yeah, Biolante is fun because you get the monster fight. Uh, he, he just fights a, like, robot ship called the uh, Super X in 84. Yeah. Cool. Okay. And you read 1010. Or was that I last read. week? Perfect demo. I don't know. Uh, I would have read it on the night after... The night we were um, usually, it would the new chapter would be coming out tonight, but we're on break, so not until next Thursday. Falcon and the Winter Soldier had a new episode last week. Mm. Has I think two more episodes. It's been all right. Yeah, I saw mm. that the the Captain America did something crazy, but I don't know what it was. Oh, I just saw yeah thumbnail clickbait. It's like that vaguely know. spoiled it. I just don't think it's very good. I don't know. I I don't think it's very good as a series. Hmm. They could both that and WandaVision. I'm like, this could be condensed down into a movie. I have no idea why it was a series. Yeah. Uh, I'll get there one day. And I'll maybe have the same stuff. Maybe I will. I don't know. Maybe it'll, maybe it'll wow me in the last two episodes, but probably not. Uh, let's just jump in today, I guess. Okay. Let's do some questions from Mr. Peter. <laughs> Question number one. How much spaghetti would a bird beetle carry? That's not one of Peter's questions. That's not. Number one, what room in your home would you want to be haunted by the ghost of Adam Sandler if you had it to be haunted? I'd say this one so he could be on the podcast. That That's a fair point. He'd be kind of permanently locked in. Yeah. I would, and we could we could make new Adam Sandler movies. Could we just get a green screen in here? He I could be anywhere could. still. He could. Uh... Probably the bathroom, because I feel like that's that room would best suit his sense of humor. Yeah. Oh, doody doody. <laughs> oh, you're taking a doody. Oh, that was a weak one. <laughs> Question two. I've noticed that you still don't have sponsors. Have you thought about just promoting things and maybe being paid later? I mean, we've done that. Yeah, we promote loop on. Yeah. We promote Star Wars. Yeah. <laughs> We're going to be promoted by Star Wars. I mean, I think... This is why I got a Star Wars tattoo. I mean, I feel like if we were to get sponsored by anyone, it probably would be Star Wars, because they're the ones who do the, like, YouTuber. They've sponsored YouTubers before. When I'm going to be in episode 10. There you go. I'm going to be the deus ex machina that destroys the planet. You're going to DDoS that planet to oblivion. So, me, Pierre, and Joe were talking about the the next the 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 phase of the DDoSer universe. <laughs> okay. So we thought of some some pretty good ideas. Uh, next DDoSer movie is still going to be a Trial of the Tech Lord or Trial of the Tech God or something up that vein. Then it's going to be Mannequin Man, mm. um, Spider Giver is a new one we thought of, Hand Boy. <laughs> Oh, uh, there was one other one, and then it's gonna be a DDoSer D World, huh? Uh, then it's gonna be. Do um, you ever want to borrow mine and my old, uh, my friend Garrett's uh, characters, Water Bottle Man and Butterscotch Boy? They're more than open to you guys. Sure. Yeah. Um, and then there's gonna be Mannequin Men. And then Mannequin Man 3 will kind of be like the, the Avengers event. Um, it won't really be Mannequin Man 3. It'll just be called The Ghost War. <laughs> but yeah, so we got big plans. Okay, cool. And then there's going to be like eight Dark Webmaster movies. Oh, man. All about you like riding a bike. <laughs> One day I'll, I'll get off those training wheels. 
wheels. Yeah. <laughs> on, on to riding a normal two wheel bike. And finally, if you had to choose a one word superhero name for yourself, what would it be? Scrunge. Mm. Does it have to be a pre existing word or can I make it up? You can get it. I think you can make it up. Uh, Sloofer. <laughs> Sounds dirty. <laughs> Sloofer's going through my underwear. <laughs> oh no, Sloofer. He's on the run. What's new, Sloofer, do? Alright, questions are done. So, let's talk about The Beast from 1988, I believe. Yeah, I think so. Uh, so, this takes place in Afghanistan. During the Russian invasion, the war, the Russian-Afghanistan war. Don't remember the exact, like, title of the war. Um, I, think, I think it was just called, like, the Soviet invasion or something like that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I think that was the, what this segment was focusing on. I know that there was a lot of, kind of, like, different skirmishes yeah. there throughout the 80s and, like, late 70s to the early, all, today. But it's about um, uh, it's about a tank full of uh, dudes, um, Russian dudes. Yeah, played by all American, all American actors. One of them is a Baldwin brother, brother. Yeah, Stephen Baldwin. Yeah, yeah. Um, all American dudes, uh, except for the one. There, uh, there is an yeah. Afghan character. Yeah, they've got the translator. Yeah, uh, who is played, by, played by Indian by, man. Yeah. He's in The Mummy. Yeah, no, he's in lots of yeah. movies. He's a pretty good actor. He's really yeah, good he in this. Um, I like him, this at the very least. Um, it's unfortunate that I don't actually mind the Americans playing Russians. I'm I'm like, whatever. That's I, I think it's fine as long as you don't have to paint your skin for the role. Yeah, yeah that's what I'm saying. I'm saying that uh, I don't have an issue with Americans playing Russians and just doing American acts. Like, I'm yeah. like, that's fine. I have more of an issue with uh, other people playing like Af- uh, people from Afghanistan. Yeah, like uh, the main character on their side that yeah. they follow. He's a Cuban actor. Yeah, I don't know if he was like I don't know if he was wearing brown face for this role because he was. I know he's he was he. I don't. I'm gonna. Say he was it Cuban. Kind of looked like they had darkened yeah. up a little bit. Yeah. Um. And it seemed like a lot of the the background characters were just people from Afghanistan, maybe. But mm. a lot of like the named characters, I'm like that person is just Indian or something. And I'm like, hmm. but yeah. uh, it is what it is. Yeah, it's unfortunate, but like I can't go back in time thirty three years and be like Kevin Reynolds. What the fuck? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> But now I can be like, Kevin Reynolds, what the fuck? Yeah, exactly. Uh, so yeah, just don't do that anymore. Uh, or yeah. ever, I guess. It's not like it's an isolated problem to him. It's a big problem that happens even today. Yeah. Like, look at fucking Ridley Scott and Prince of Egypt. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Ridley Scott, what the fuck? Yeah. Fuck. Um, uh, but yeah. But so th- this... The plot's pretty simple. It's just... Um, a tank's lost. A tank's lost in a valley and being targeted by the Afghanistan rebels, like mm-hmm. the, the other side, and they're trying to blow it up because the tank is full of people that just destroyed a village and have right. been terrorizing well, them pretty one much. One of the... Like, two of the first things we see this tank do is, like, torture a guy and kill him by, like, putting his feet in the tread. And then just slowly running over. That was fucking yeah. brutal. That and was more... That immediately, like, I'm like, oh, that's... More brutal than I expected from like this. Yeah. Movie. I don't um, know why. And then they poison like a water, like a little water, is it like a reservoir. I don't know, yeah. Just a little, little oasis out in the. I don't know. It's a, doesn't it need like nature? You know, oasis. A, there's some water out. A the little desert. water thing. <laughs> and they poison it, and then some people go and drink from it, and they die. One person does, and then later in the movie. Some other people drink from it and die, but that's later in the movie. Uh, Yeah, basically, they're lost. Their commander is is very racist and very crazy. Yeah, he's like... 
evil, and all of them are just kind of slowly, like, losing their minds. Yeah, there's this one guy who's been, like, siphoning the gas tank to drink. Yeah, he's like, it's okay, I just filter it through, like, a sock or something, he says, and then, like, yeah. raisins and grain, and it's fine. Yeah, I let it ferment in the sun for a little bit, and it's good to go. And then Stephen Baldwin is, uh, like, hey, uh, I'm following directions, but I don't really like what I'm doing. Mm-hmm. And then the, our main character, who is, <laughs> what's his name? A lot of Russian names. Yeah, the only name I remember from the movie is Tank Boy. Uh, Konstantin Kovarchenko. Constantine. Yeah, Constantine. Uh, he's like... He's the one that runs over the dude at the beginning on orders, but he still does it. Yeah. Um, but, he, he's but he's like, this is wrong. Like, uh, yeah, he's just like... Uh, because he's, he's friends with the translator that they've got, and yeah. the captain pulls him aside and is like, what are you doing? You can't trust that guy. And he's like, what do you mean? He's fine. Like, he's just, he's just talking to me. He's teaching me about, like, his yeah, culture. He teaches and them, like, uh, some of their, like, principles, and that, that becomes relevant later on, because he yeah. teaches them, like... What was it? Naru Mate or something like that? Uh, something like that. Uh... I, I just watched it before coming over here and I didn't take notes, but uh, yeah, basically, like, he kind of tells them about, like, these principles that they have with concepts of, like, revenge and forgiveness. Yeah, revenge was badal. And, uh, yeah, he basically just uh, teaches Not them that. And then the captain shoots the translator for no yeah. fucking reason. After he was like, hey, you need to shoot him. He's like, fuck that. I'm not doing that. Yeah. And then he's like, hey, I need you to go test the, the water and see how deep it is. Yeah. And then he just shoots him in the back. Yeah. And then he, uh, like... And then the uh, our lead character is like, well, I'm going to fucking write you up. And then he's still, like, obviously not on their side. So they fucking just chain him up in the middle of the desert. Yeah, like, it gets to a point where he's like, what do you think we should do? Because they come to the conclusion after they shoot the guy that they're out of fuel. The tank is fucked. They're not going to make it very far in it. And he's like, what? You think we should just walk back? And he's like, yeah, like basically. And the guy's like, immediately, he's just like, that's mutiny. And then they both like reach for the guns. Obviously, he realizes this guy's crazy and just looking for any excuse to shoot him. And then, yeah, they tie him up. Put a grenade under him. Yeah, which blow some dogs come later and blow that up. But they abandoned him with the grenade behind his head. And eventually uh, uh, the rebel group finds them. Yeah, and he says Nanawatai. Yeah. Uh, which they're like, well, we gotta we gotta respect them or whatever. Most of them are like, let's shoot him, but the Khan is like, no, no. Because he's like newly in power, mm-hmm. his his like father Bro- his and his brother. brother. I think it yeah. was both of them. Yeah, because he was like crying, and then he sees his brother dead too, and he's like, ah! <laughs> yeah, he's like, oh, it's a double whammy. So he's like trying to be a good leader. So he's like, okay, well, I guess we'll do it. Um, and then he's like, oh, they're like, fix this RPG, and he's like, okay, cool. <laughs> I don't, I, I'll fucking kill those guys. Yeah, he's like, fuck those guys. So, yeah. Uh, and then, eventually, they chase down the tank, and they do end up just uh, destroying it. Like, they... They, they, they run it off the track. Yeah, so they, they destroy... It. Well, they hit it with a muzzle, and then the, like, women villagers... Mm, they, they had some grenades. They had some grenades that they stage. fucking just had a landslide come down and hit the tank. Yeah. And then they let them go, because he's like, hey, you should let him go. Because uh, the tanks destroy him. And the con's like, fine. And then the women fucking chase down uh, Tank Boy, who mm. was the, the leader of the, the tank, yeah. and just fucking murder him. Yeah. And they were going to murder the other two. But, but they got away. And then uh, fucking our main character is like freaked out by it. So he's like, well, I'm just going to go. Because it seems at this point he's just like, I'm just going to go live with the con. They were going to kiss. They were. <laughs> they were. They were. <laughs> they were some. Connection between them. Yeah, they're like they were like becoming actual friends. It was great. Let's hope Allah's not looking for a second. Let's just kiss. (laughs) 
But <laughs> they were getting, they were doing it. Uh, but yeah, so basically, uh, yeah. Then a helicopter shows up and is like, "Hey, we see you." Yeah, I and then everybody's like on. running and they're like, "Constantine, Constantine." He's like, "Bye." <laughs> yeah. He's like, "That was too scary. I'm leaving." Also, there's a point halfway through the movie, or like the last like half an hour of the movie, where the people in the tank they have the option to leave. Like oh yeah, a helicopter up. comes, but they're like, "Well, we're going to destroy the tank," and he's like, "Nobody destroys my tank." Yeah, he's and like, I was like, what the fuck is wrong with you? So they're just like, okay, we'll have fun with that. And then they, they mentioned that they were low on water at that point, and they end up going to that little water spot that was poisoned, and they die. Oh, yeah. Woo! <laughs> Classic. But, yeah. yeah. Uh, I really liked this movie. Mm-hmm. Or I, I enjoyed it quite a decent amount. Yeah, I thought it was um, pretty good. Minus, like, the obvious elephant in the room, which we discussed earlier. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but I, I thought it was pretty good. I really like the main characters. Uh, I, I do really like his performance. I like the performance of the con. I think he does, like, a good job. Yeah, he, he does decent. And the translator, I can't remember what his name is. So. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> but he was fantastic. I really liked him. The bomb just go on? <laughs> what the fuck? Uh, Eric Avari. Mm. Oh yeah, he's in Paul Blart Mall Cop. You know, he's in a bunch of like Adam Sandler movies too. I'm pretty sure. Not that it doesn't. Support. Or just like the type of like he's an Encino man. Mm. Uh, he's in he's in Mr. Deeds. He is fuck. I haven't watched Mr. Deeds since I was a kid. I remember really liking Mr. Deeds as a kid. I remember being kind of bored by it. <laughs> I don't know what it was. I think it was just like I like the guy. He's nice. <laughs> I. Th- is there like a part where he like slides down the rail of the stairs and hits his nuts on like the yeah yeah classic classic yeah classic. <laughs> anyway, we were talking about the Beast of War, yes. which isn't super similar to Mister G. Yeah. <laughs> they're yeah, they're close. You know, they're both like war movies. Uh, yeah, <laughs> they're both fish out of water stories. <laughs> um. I think the soundtrack's really good. Uh, it's by fucking this guy. I was looking at him earlier. Mark e- Isham? Isham? Uh, he did the composition for The Mist. That's the first thing I saw. Because I remember I watched The Mist like in 2008 or something. And I don't remember anything about it except that I remember like even as a kid I'm like, I like this. I like this soundtrack. Oh, okay. Well, but I like the soundtrack in this. And I think... Uh, the cinematography works really well for, like, making the tank feel really uh, cramped. I don't know why, but in Fury, it didn't it didn't feel like they were in a tank some of the time. Mm. Like, a lo- maybe, may- I don't doubt that they were in, like, a small thing, but I don't know. The way they shot it a lot of the time, uh, it felt like they were just in I'm the chair. Sure oh, I'm in a chair. A hard time fitting, like, a, a, film, big, a yeah. big camera in a real tank. So well, I'm sure it probably was just... Maybe, I don't know. So, like, Fury felt a lot less claustrophobic than this movie, um, which I like that feeling for this movie, because it's, like, supposed to be tense and, Mm -hmm. like, uh, cramped. Mm -hmm. Um, But, yeah, I I, I really enjoyed it. Yeah. Yeah. I don't don't really have a whole lot of strong opinions on it, uh, but I I did enjoy it. Cool. Uh, But, yeah. So... I think you would give this movie a seven. No, sorry. Oh, okay, an eight. <laughs> yeah, I was holding something. So I, um, <laughs> I was like, oh, right. I'm guessing you're gonna give this one a six. Mm, yeah, it's like it's somewhere between a six and a seven. Oh, okay. I'll, I'll settle on a six for now. Maybe I'll oh, warm it up to a seven if I ever decide to rewatch it. Uh, now let's talk about David Ayer and his fury. I don't like it. <laughs> it's fair. I didn't I, like it. I, I don't know. I don't I, know. I saw it like when you saw it in 2014. This? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I remember seeing it in theaters and I was like, not bad. But I was also a dumb sophomore in high school when this movie came out. So 
uh, I, my opinions on a lot of the things, including film, have changed quite a bit. Uh, and yeah, I just didn't, didn't, didn't dig it. Uh, it's, I feel like it's a little unsure of what it wants to be, whether it wants to be a gritty war, like historical drama, or if it wants to be an action movie. Uh, it, yeah, I, that fucking, so like the, the bullets just look like lasers. Yeah. I remember some buddy saying like, Ooh, it look like that real life. I'm like, I don't, I don't think it would. Uh, this is like back when I saw them. Like the tank parts or like, because the, the even bullets the machine that they were guns using. were like, even the machine guns yeah. look like lasers. I'm like, I don't think that's how guns work. Yeah. I think that, well, what's this film? This film's gotta be rated R. There's no way it's not. Yeah. They say fuck quite a bit. Yeah. Like a lot. And like somebody gets their head blown off. Yeah. yeah. Some of, some of like the violence in the movie, like, uh, in the beast, like, the, the violence in that movie felt real. Like, it felt like yeah. what violence is really like. Like, when that guy got crushed by that tank, I was like, oh, God. Yeah, I was like, holy shit. But this movie has, like, the kind of, like, over-the-top metalocalypse type violence. Like, there's a scene where a guy's on fire, and he's like, oh! And it's just, like, it's so, like, above and beyond and hyper-extreme that it kind of ruins whatever somber tone they're going for. Yeah. There's a scene where he's, like, cleaning up the tank and there's just a chunk of face. And it's just, like... And I get, like, war is... Which, there's a very similar scene in Beast of War where he pulls out... He's cleaning the treads and he pulls out a hand. But it's much different. Yeah. (laughs) Like, it doesn't quite get that. Because when it's the face, it's like, well... He's got some of his eyeball in there. Yeah, I, feel how, like like, I don't think that it's how that works. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But with the simple, just like hand and the like underneath the tank, it's like, oh, yeah, that feels a lot more tangible. And I feel like that's a more symbolic thing than mm. a, like, or at least it's more deep than. I feel like Fury just tries to do a lot. Like it's trying to say it's, a lot, but it's really, really surface level stuff. Yeah, it's all by the numbers. You know exactly how the film's going to go. It's like the nice kid joins this hardened platoon of tank drivers. And it's so funny that like David Ayer directed the Sui- Suicide Squad because he, his direction feels so much like Zack Snyder to me. Mm. I don't know what it is. And even the movies that are considered good by him, which is this one, this is considered good by a lot of people, and End of Watch, I hated End of Watch. I'm sure I would probably hate End of Watch. I I kind of had a similar experience with End of Watch that I did with this, where I saw it in theaters. But now I'm sure I, now that I'm much more conscious on a bunch of different levels, I'm sure I'd be like, oh, this is fucking gross. And it's just like, it's... I don't know if this movie's trying to be edgy or it's trying to make its characters out to be bad, but like, yeah, it's no, like they don't. They're all feel fleshed out at all. Like, pretty most of the characters in Beast of War, to me at least, felt at least reasonably evil or like, like it makes sense that yeah, a person like this could exist. But like, I don't know. Brad Pitt's character was fucking weird in this movie. Yeah. I don't know what they were trying to convey with him. Like, oh, he's, you know, he's he takes care of his crew, but he will traumatize you. <laughs> yeah, it's like, I, I think they're going for like, a, war is hard whether you're soft or not, so you gotta learn how to harden up. But like, Brad Pitt's supposed to be like, that hard guy who's still got that soft core. But that's like who? That's baby bullshit. It's nothing. Who cares? Like, I don't know. Like, it didn't really feel like it was going for anything. Just because you have a guy on the crew who is a lot shittier than Brad Pitt character is displayed to be. I mean, I don't. I don't think that necessarily really does anything. But I don't know. I just it. Yeah, like the whole movie felt like. Just very predictable. The young, meek, I don't want to be here. I'm supposed to be typing. But then, he, of course, he's the spoiler. One who survives. And it's- I also really don't like that he survives. Like, if you're going to... Because especially the last part of the tone, I'm just like, okay, at least they're going to end it on like, yeah, war is fucking brutal. So the survivor's like, you're not going to survive war, especially if you're this, like, ill-equipped. 
it, I think it would have been better when that soldier like leans down and sees him if he shoots him. Like I just, mm-hmm. but he's like, oh, I survived. I'm like, that's stupid. Yeah. Which is unfortunate because I think Logan Lerman, who plays that guy, he played like Percy Jackson in no, the movies. No. I think he's like, I, he's fine in the movie. I mean, he's, but David Ayer doesn't know how to fucking write a script. Yeah. It's like his characters are just cringy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and not in like a fun way either. And this movie, it doesn't, it's, I think it's trying to make its characters like fun and it juxtaposes them against like this brutal war scene. Because they're supposed to have like these fun things or like laughing early on. It's like, you think Hitler would have sex with us for a chocolate bar? Yeah. Like, what definitely. kind of fucking question is this? It's like none of the humor really helped humanize them at all or really like helped latch onto them. And scenes that happen later, like when they all fucking just invade that random. Like, that, that was a house. Why? That whole section right there was just like, okay, well, Brad Pitt and Percy Jackson break into this lady's house, pull them out from under the bed, and are like, all right, make us some tea. Uh, my my young my young stud here is gonna have sex with your cousin. And it, the movie portrays it like she's like, oh yeah, you know, I'm into but it. But I'm so like, it's, but it's like it's still not in this, okay. Yeah, this would not be even if this person was a hundred percent interested. It would not be a okay thing to do. This would not be an a, an area where this is a consensual situation. Yeah. You're an enemy invader mm-hmm. in someone's home. Yeah, and they like do that, and then they're like, "We're gonna have some eggs," and then like the rest of the platoon comes in, and our, Michael Pena is wearing a funny hat. Yeah, Michael Pena is wearing a funny hat, and then they're just. The fucking terrible people for the next like ten minutes that this scene. And then they goes walk on. out, and then the house is immediately bombed. Yeah, like a minute after they leave. Yeah, and then fucking. Uh, I usually know John Berthold. Yeah, you fucking the Punisher pulls uh, Percy Jackson. And he's like, ah, he "What are you? You gonna raise him from the dead?" And he's like, "You just let him." for fucking 30 seconds. It's like day two of war for him. Like, let him fucking <gasps> rip off that first band-aid as slow as he wants. <coughs> and, yeah, it's just, I don't know. And then, yeah, they they die in the tank. They get s- stuck on this, like, uh, what is it, like a transport mission. Yeah. And then everybody dies, and then there's a big German army ahead and they're like oh mm. and they're like we're just gonna abandon and Brad Pitt's like we don't abandon the mission and it's like it's the same like tactic that the other guy used and he was portrayed as a villain but in this is it's like yep Brad Pitt's a hero and I'm like this is not <laughs> yep it's like you guys all maybe I would have enjoyed this movie if I didn't watch it <laughs> next to the Beast of War. Yeah, maybe that's why I enjoyed the Beast of War so much because I watched it after this. Oh. Movie. So I was just like, oh great, they did perfect. <laughs> this is what I wanted from Fury a little bit. Uh, but yeah, it's just like yeah, I don't know. I just didn't like like anything in this. I didn't like. The characters, I also didn't really... I like a lot of the actors in this. Like, I like Brad Pitt quite a bit now. Uh, I thought he sucked in this movie. I really didn't like any of the performances yeah, in this I'd, movie. I'd say, generally, I tend to like all the actors, minus actual abuser Shia LaBeouf. Yeah. I actually, like, when I picked this movie, I'd forgotten that he was in it. And I'm like, great. Yeah. Um, and it's, it's really frustrating, because I think Michael Pena is, like, a pretty decent actor... But he's either in just shit comedies or shit like, oh, like yeah. historical dramas or some shit. I'm like, dude, what the fuck are you doing? Yeah, he really needs to hook up with like someone who knows what they're doing. <laughs> it's like, like he's pretty good in Ant Man, I guess. Well, he's utilized correctly. In Ant-Man. Yeah, like he can be a good like comedic force, and he's yeah. <sighs> It's just frustrating. And I think John Bernthal is, like, pretty good as an actor, and I just really did not like him in this movie. Like, his character, but 
You're yeah. kind of supposed to hate his character. He, he I gets, think. This era especially, he was typecast as like... Hey, he's the worst! <laughs> yeah, the worst in everything. It's like... It's just like... Ah. But, um... I also really didn't like the action sequences in this movie. Yeah. Most of them are really boring to me. The only one I liked is there was a... Uh, the the other the one fight that's actually between tanks yeah like that the, part I really insane. liked that like action sequence and then that was it like, mm. it was the rest of the movie I just didn't like <laughs> uh yeah yeah I also thought the the fucking score of this movie was so fucking overbearing to me. Mm-hmm. I'm like, how heavy handed is every facet of this movie? It's like, oh, it's a sad war song. Yeah. Like, yeah. Did you like the scene where Shia LaBeouf gets shot in the eye and he has like the singular tear of blood? No. Wasn't that just so avant garde and beautiful? <laughs> It should have zoomed in on just his face for like 25 seconds with nothing but silence. <laughs> I actually would have loved that. It would have... Because it would have just been like... I mean, at least it would have been like, hey, I'm sticking to these stupid choices. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and it should have stopped. And then the movie should have been black and white from then on. Like the last like 10 minutes. Man. <laughs> they should have just brought David Lynch in to direct the last 15 minutes of this movie. David Lynch's Fury would have been a good movie. Mm-hmm. I stand by that. This movie would have been much better if it was. Never mind. I was gonna make a furry joke and say, it. "What if they were all versions in the tank?" What if Lego Lagoshi from Beastars was the main character? There we go. He's like, "Hey, I, I can type sixty words a minute." <laughs> oh, I thought you meant as like Brad Pitt's character. I'm like, that kind of makes sense. <laughs> but well, Lewis would be Brad Pitt's character. Who? Lewis is the deer. Oh. Uh, He's the worst. <laughs> yeah, I'm not a big fan of his character thus far. Uh, yeah, that's that's Fury. It just sucks. Yeah. I, Ni- neither of these movies felt like a lot happened in either of them. Like, they're both just yeah. movies about tanks getting from one point to the other. Well, war. Uh, but, like, like the, f- the Beasts of War strives for like pretty interesting character development yeah. and like how being in a tank being in war like affects your psyche and i don't know for the most part like logan lerman breaks down but everyone else is just like yeah i'm pretty much the same character as i was at the beginning of the movie yeah we get like a breakdown scene when brad pitt at the beginning when he's smoking his cigarette but it's a little bit yeah but there's no like lasting consequences yeah. for any of this other than that he gets everybody killed. Mm-hmm. But, like, the movie frames that as, like, a heroic deed. Mm-hmm. And, like, it's not... Uh, it's just a bad movie. Yeah, it's not good. David Ayer does not seem like a good director. Well, I don't know. I've seen. Seen. Mm-hmm. Have you seen Bright? Bright? Yeah. No. It's not I, good. I have... Just pick him for a director deed, Doug. <laughs> Hopefully not. <laughs> Okay, uh, I think you'd give this movie a three. Two? Mm-hmm. Wow. Wow. Holy shit. I just, it really didn't do any, it, like, yeah. it was all, didn't look good. Yeah, I kept reading reviews being like, this movie looks amazing. I'm like, no, it doesn't. It's yeah. just dark. Didn't look good. With lasers. None of the actors felt like they were giving it anything. The writing was bad. The directing was bad. The fucking characters were evil. Do you like my shirt? I do. Julia gave it to me. Ooh, it was too big on her. For those of you who can't read my shirt, Thomas, read it out. You think you felt true fear? You think you know actual pain? And it has a stuffed animal worm. From the Beanie Baby. From the Beanie Baby collection. Uh, Caterpillar. Oh, you would give this a... Like a three, maybe a two? I think I would also give this a two. Yeah. I came into this being like, maybe I'll give it a three. Because I didn't want to be too negative. Because I'm like... 
maybe I just I don't know why I don't know. I, I, but I think as I talk, sometimes you know you talk about a movie and as you talk about it, you're you're just like maybe I did like it even less than I thought. Yeah. No, I've, I've definitely been there because it's like sometimes you feel like you're in your own little echo chamber where you're just like, I, am I am I wrong in the situation? And then you talk it with another person and you're like, oh, no. No, I feel like I've, I've worked it out. I'm confident in saying this movie shit. And I feel like it usually takes me about uh, a, f- a few hours to fully like have my, my full opinion. And I did just finish Fury a bit ago. But it's just like, yeah, fucking suck. Yeah, there's um, no silver light. Fuck you, David. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm sure you're a nice enough guy, maybe. In the spirit of Paul Thomas Anderson, I won't say your movie was oh. god awful. Yeah. yeah, I would just say I'd give it a 2 out of 10, but I won't like the movie. <laughs> Lots of stuff. He wrote the script for Fast and the Furious 1. We're going to watch all those movies. <clears throat> One day. No. We're nine episodes away from a hundred. We're hit. We hit 161 subscribers. What? We've gotten like 30 in the past month. Like we're actually like Shit. it's that like, wrong turn video. We're actually getting a bit of bit of traction here. Yeah, I was a little worried about hitting that 250 goal because we weren't getting very much being in here. But you know, if this keeps up, mm-hmm. we're gonna hit it. Maybe we'll even hit one million subs this year. <laughs> I can only hope. And, you know, and then get subway by sponsor. Pray hard enough, anything's possible. <laughs> All right. Uh, oh, we didn't even talk. Who are, who's picking this week? I mean, I've got a couple back pocket choices. If you don't, I don't know. We'll, we'll see what happens here. here. Yeah. No, nope, no bag, dude. <laughs> You want to just pick a bag? Fuck it. Let's do a bag. It's a bag. <laughs> We're doing a bag episode next week. All right. Yeah, you pick one. I'll pick one. There's more than one thing. I'm just checking. Okay, this is a one piece of paper. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. I think you told me about this one. Oh. If is it's it? what I think it is, then it's going to be bad. Okay. What? What is this? <laughs> what is it? It's, it's just, I'm just going to say it. Okay. Hold on, you reveal yours first. Uh, The Stupids. Yeah, that's that fucking Tom Arnold movie. Oh, yeah. I've got one that just says 9-11 on it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so 9-11 is a 2017 uh, movie. About uh, five people that get trapped in an elevator uh, in the World Trade Center in 9 11. And uh, Charlie Sheen is one of the main characters. I've heard of this interview. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> it's, uh... <laughs> All right. <laughs> it's going to be good. <laughs> Woo! Yeah, the stupids. And 9 11. We're going to watch a fucking shitty 9 11 drama. A movie about stupid people who think there's a conspiracy to steal their garbage. <laughs> that sounds awesome. <laughs> Maybe it's really good. Maybe it is. Have you seen it? I when I was a kid. Did you and you didn't like it as a kid, right? No. <laughs> Tom Arnold is probably the least funny person to maybe exist on Earth ever. He was not good. How did he? He was married to Roseanne Barr. Oh, and she kinda, that's scary. She like, uh, well, he when know. the show was going on, he was like, basically like, she negotiated to get him on as a head writer, and like they wrote him as like a side character on the show. Like, I mean, he paid his dues. He had to be married to Roseanne Barr. <laughs> I mean, how do we know that Roseanne Barr didn't pay her dues because she had to be married to Tom Arnold? Well, Roseanne Barr is like extremely racist. <laughs> Please to say Tom Arnold. Tom Arnold might also. He might. To be fair, I have no base to my accusations there. Tom Arnold kind of looks like um, the dad from Get Out. I don't think he does. <laughs> he looks but... like if Get Out was a was a true story. He looks like the, the dad was casted. He looks to be like how. 
they should have just had him in the background as like one of the people, like the legit Tom Arnold, as one of the people. The like, stupid trying... should have been the neighbors. Yeah, they should be in Get Out too. Get Out harder, dude. I'm so excited for fucking Candyman. Yeah, does it? What is it released? I don't know. It, it's just it'll just drop one day. <laughs> it'll come out one day, and I'll be there. Will just be a VHS tape that like lands on your front porch, and it'll just have the new candy on. <laughs> I would be extremely happy. I've got a working VCR; it's already hooked up and ready to go. I'll drive down. Like, <laughs> hey, Tommy, she's mother and father. You met me once. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, everybody. Thank you for watching. A little short episode of Screen Wings. Yeah, thank you to the viewer who suggested the Beast yeah, of War. Nick! Thanks, Nick. Thanks, Appreciate Nick. it. If you do have any other... If anyone has any uh, recommendations, I'm not going to say we'll do every single one. Maybe recommend, hey, can you watch uh, Ghostmates again? Probably won't do that. We won't do uh, repeats, probably. Well, Unless it's scenes from marriage. I, there's been a couple movies I've considered, like... Maybe we should do like a repeat episode. But I feel like we have to get at least a hundred episodes yeah, in. Yeah, we can't we can't repeat any before a hundred. And I feel like if we did like a retalk, like a talk, it would just be it wouldn't be a screen wings episode, it'd just be like an offshoot or something. Like in a bonus episode. Yeah. You know? Like I have considered like maybe making like small videos where it's like, I recommend this movie that we watched on the podcast that you probably won't want to watch this five hour podcast for, so I'll just do this little two minute recommendation. Hey, here's Paul Thomas Anderson. Right. <laughs> You know, look, at, look, we made a five-hour podcast because we were psychopaths. <laughs> now we're sitting... I felt, I felt good that day after. I remember recording after sitting there for five and a half hours and being like, we did it. We recorded the Paul Thomas Anderson yeah. episode. I mean, that was awesome. Yeah. I don't... I like... I like talking to you for that long. Oh, yeah. But... No, I... feel like it wasn't good for the podcast. Probably not. It probably wasn't good for our clicks. But once we get huge, then we'll do it again. Yeah. <laughs> we'll go back. I get stuck with us now. All right, everybody. Uh, like I said, if you want to recommend a uh, movie or a TV show or anything like that, just email us at screen at gmail.com or comment on our YouTube channel or uh, call Thomas's cell phone. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Th th bye. <laughs> Tell your grandma.